Hello and welcome back to our DCOM tutorial series. Today we are going to continue talking about graphics, the complicated, complicated world of GBA graphics. Um, so we are going to briefly get into a little bit about tile sets and tile maps, not specifically in relation to creating maps and map and tile sets. That is not what we are talking about today, although there is plenty of similarities in concepts because there's still tile sets and tile maps at the end of the day. Um, so here, what I have right here is I have this image. Uh, this is just a picture of Samaya from the Pokemon movie that is reduced and looks pretty crappy. Um, and I want to insert this into the game. Now how do I insert this into the game? In the last graphics tutorial we briefly talked about sprites and palettes and how to export them and put them in the and replace a Pokemon sprite in the case of, of that video. Um, but if we are trying to insert a full image or just any image that's not going to be the size of a sprite um, and that's a lot of things that we might want to insert in the game like a title screen which is what this is going to be. I will cover actually putting it in in the title screen in the next video um, and a little bit more about title screen editing in the next video but uh, for now I just want to know what like format the GBA is going to need this in. So the GBA needs this in a tile set and a tile map. Uh, now that's because the GBA uh, reads all of the anything in the game, even sprites, as 8x8 eight eight tiles. Um, everything in the game is can like under the hood is considered an 8x8 eight eight tile. Even all your sprites are technically broken up into 8x8 eight eight tiles. That's what the GBA PPU interacts with when it's doing its different, you know, algorithms and processes for changing our graphics, uh, you know, in the ways that it's set up to do more efficiently. Um, so here, how do we create this tile set uh, com with this, uh, you know, picture that we have, and how do we make it, uh, how do we get it back into this format once we get it into the game? Now, uh, the answer to that is a tile map, um, but to begin with, we need to talk about palettes. And uh, the and the size, the number of tiles. So so there's a lot of complications around how much memory uh, VRAM the GBA has. It only has 96 kilobytes of VRAM, I believe. Uh, actually, let me check real quick just to make sure. We might as well. Um, so the GBA has 96 kilobytes of VRAM. It is split. Um, and then on top of that, there's one kilobyte of palette RAM and one kilobyte of OAM. Um, so there's 96 kilobytes of VRAM, and this is split up holding 65 kilobits store the background graphics, and 32 kilobytes store the sprite graphics. Um, now, what this means for us specifically is that um, in each uh, char block that we have, the, the VRAM is split up into different char blocks. Uh, we can look here for a representation of the char blocks. So this is how our, v, our, our VRAM is split up in a char block one, two, three, uh, and zero. I've skipped over zero. And then also these screen blocks, which I'll get into in a second. Um, these can only hold um, up to, uh, as it says here, it can only hold up to 256 8 BPP tiles or 512 4 BPP tiles. Now what this means is 8 bits per pixel. What that means is that our palette over here has 256 entries. Each, uh, so instead of instead of storing all of the individual colors for each pixel when we have an image uh, that we're storing in the game, we are instead storing a 1 through 16, or in the case of 8 BBP, 1 through 255 value that corresponds with the palette. And then we store the colors in the palette file. Instead of storing all the colors in the image file, so we just have blue, 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 instead we can shrink the space a lot, and this is just how images work in general, by storing the palette number and then the palette number aligns with the uh, you know the color here and that's how the GBA is able to read it but when we're storing it like that to save space we either choose four bits or eight bits so we can store the palette in four bits that means we can only count up to four bits and four bits can only hold zero through fifteen so we have only zero through fifteen colors the first one being transparency um, usually. Um, if we're in 256 color mode, you might have something that's loaded in 16-bit color mode, uh, but that's on an offset and the uh, it's not technically going to be the first one compared to the 256 color mode backgrounds, but that's neither here nor there for this moment. 
Um, so right now we have uh, this image is in four bits per pixel color mode because uh, the GBA mode that we are using in this UI, this title screen UI that this is being created for, renders this on a background that is for BBP. So the determination of whether or not it's for BBP or a BBP uh, if you're not creating your own UI, is not up to you. It's up to whatever is already in the code. If you're creating your new UI, you get to decide, okay, here are the different background modes. There's, uh, there's m multiple different modes that let you... Uh, choose, you know, well, what you're storing. Um, but you... Uh, at the end of the day, you can store your... I'm sorry, I'm getting a little confused here. Um, for no reason. Um... So here, uh, let's just go to the mode sections on this page so that I am not giving you any false information. Here we go. Um, so mode zero provides four static layers. You can put anything in these four static layers. The four car blocks are our char blocks are available to you. Um, you can put anything to, to them. You can put you can you can you can put eight BBP layers. It's not a problem. Uh, the the mode is not what affects us particularly, not what affects the uh, the uh, palette mode that you're in. While I was saying that uh, is because specifically when you're in mode 1, you are in an affine layer, and when you're in an affine layer, you have to be in 8 BBP mode, and when you're in 8 BBP mode, you can only have 256 tiles, and this is for things like the region map is in 8 BBP mode, and it's in mode 1 because it's in a fine layer. A fine uh, layers do things with uh, like stretching, scaling, rotating. Uh, you know, if you've played Mario Kart Super Circuit, it's how they uh, f kind of move the map, uh, or the like fake pseudo Latios, Latios flying over the region map is done using mode one graphics. Um, so these, uh, the and then mode two, so it has two affine layers. So you can only have two layers um, with uh, two different, uh, two different 256 uh, 8 BBP tile sets each, and that's all you can have. Um, so normally with your background, you can have 0, 1, 2, and 3 layers. Uh, you have four background layers available to you, um, and you can provide, you can use all four layers when you're in mode 0, but you cannot use all four layers in mode 1. You only have three layers, and you cannot use all uh, you can only use two layers when you're in mode two. Um, there's also more modes uh, for the GBA here, um, but uh, that is not going to be relevant to our tiles because that's when we are um, going beyond uh, beyond tiles, as it says here. Um, mode three allocates a single fully colored 16 BBP uh, color frame, so this allows you to have a lot more colors, but it's only one uh, one layer, which is not useful to us the majority of time. It's we can't do it while we're in the overworld. We can't do it in most UIs because we need uh, we need text windows. We need a bunch of other stuff. Mode four provides two frames with half the colors. This one uh, can be useful for certain things, but again, we're not going to be using it almost ever if you're programming in this game. Mode five, two fully colored frames with half the size each. Uh, again, irrelevant to us. Um, so the things that we are, are mo mainly worried about are what layers we're printing our backgrounds to, uh, the char blocks that it's being, the, the tile set is being saved in, um, and then also the tile map is being saved in the screen blocks. So we have uh, the tile the we have the tile set that we are saving uh, in VRAM, but we also have to save the tile map. The tile map is telling the game what to do with these tiles. So we have uh, like here where uh, so we have these tiles here, um, but to get them into a background layer, we need a tile map. And uh, this tile map is defined. We use Tile Map Studio. Um, the it's basically just taking the indexes of, of our tile set and it's saving them into a binary file with just the just the value of the index in the tile set and the palette that is stored uh, for that tile in the tile map. So this is just storing, uh, it's just a two byte value. The, the palette I believe is stored separately at the end of the tile map, uh, not, next to, uh, not next to the tiles themselves, but uh, so this is this this is just uh, storing the individual bytes. In this case, it's one byte because this is uh, this is in two hundred fifty six or this is in 
four BBP. Uh, so it is actually it has access to uh, to two bytes worth of uh, of data, and it is storing it that way um, technically. Um, sorry about that. When we're in 8 BBP mode, like for the region map, then it's storing it as a single byte, and uh, you can only have up to 256 uh, indexes. You can only have up to 256 tiles, but here we can have up to 512 tiles uh, because it has more, it has 8, eight, eight, eight bits. Uh, it's not just uh, 4 bits per pixel. Um, so here our tile set is uh, created in Tile Map Studio by creating image of tiles, input, we take our photo here, we create an output, I'm not going to select it here because I don't want uh, to overwrite this one because technically the palette is round on it. Um, so we're creating this new tiles file and, and now here we have to select what type of tiles we want and this is going to determine whether or not we can create it so if, if you do not, if you're 8 bbp and you have too many tiles you've got 500 tiles in your tile set it is not going to work under this a gba tiles dot plus four bbp palettes a lot of those are rendered as plain tiles uh, instead of gba tiles plus 8 bbp i'm not sure why but when you open them in tile map studio it opens as plain tiles i think maybe it doesn't matter but uh just if you're just changing something, like let's say we are changing the title screen Requaza bin, we are going to open it as not plain tiles because again, this one is not ABPB. Like I said, this one is 4 BBP. That's DS. Um, so we're opening this one as 4 BBP tiles, and we can see this tile map. This is the tile set here for the Requaza. And basically, what you do is you just click around and put it in here. Um, if you have, if you're loading the tile set yourself. But again, we have this image the tiles thing that automatically uh, tile, creates a tile set from a blank image. So this is taking our blank image and it is creating a tile set for us. Uh, but if you already have your tile set, then you would just load your tile set. Um, you would just create a new tile map. You just go new tile map, uh, new tile map, and then you go load tile set, and then you would load your tile set, and it would load your tile set and, uh, exactly like that. Uh, and you would create your tile map by uh, just dragging around on here. So Tile Map Studio, you can get uh, by typing it into Google. Tile Map Studio. It's also from the Pratt Wiki. You can also find it there. Uh, but again, the main function we're going to be using here is the image to tiles because this is going to automatically create a tile set for us, and it's going to automatically um, put the tile set. Uh, it's going to automatically create the tile map for us as well, matching our original image, which is very important. Now, for our original image, when we created it um, here, um, if we are creating this tiles thing right here, this is smaller than we wanted. Uh, so in game, it's uh, 32 by 32. So we're going to go and we're going to increase this by 32 by 32. It doesn't really matter that this stuff is blue uh, because it's not going to be shown. But uh, the important thing is we need to change the palette. So we're going to the palette side because of the way that this UI is loaded, this is not being loaded in on the zeroth palette in the C. A lot of the times, you, you, you know, for your backgrounds, there are 16 palettes or there's one 256 color palette. A lot of the time, uh, you're going to be loading these on the zeroth palette, so you're not going to have to change it. But in this case specifically, because of where this palette is loaded for the background, uh, we can check uh, this by opening the Requaza bin again uh, if we go to. I uh, did it wrong. We're opening it with the palette. I guess that's the main thing between the plain tiles and the ABBP palette. You should probably do ABBP palette because that's saving the palette with it. Uh, anyway, I, again, haven't messed with this stuff as much as I would like to be making these tutorials, but I've done it enough that I can I can change the things on the title screen and I can insert any of these tile maps and tile sets after enough time. I have recreated... Uh, my own entire UI at this point uh, for the region map from scratch. Uh, and that, uh, you know, was an ordeal in of, its, of itself because I was in mode one and uh, had to have the affine zooming and stuff. But I'm getting too far away. So here we can tell right here we have E. That's all right here. We have E, E palette. Uh, so here, because we want the exact same palette uh, on this one, we want to just take E and we're just going to drag it all around and we're just going to color it in. I've already done it uh, for when I inserted it, um, so we are just going to ignore it and we are going to 
uh, we're going to wrap up there. So I'm sorry that I rambled a bit when I uh, was talking about these tile modes because, again, it's a confusing conversation and I didn't exactly write a script out. Uh, so when I started reading stuff, I started tripping over my words a bit. But the basic things that we need to understand for uh, these tile modes and rendering graphics in tile modes is, uh, one, that we have our tile set and our tile map. Those are two different things. We load our tile set uh, into our uh, a char block. Um, now, you know, doing that yourself is a little complicated, and I recommend uh, looking up uh, Grunt Lucas's uh, UI tutorial. Uh, it's not really a tutorial as much as it's a blank UI branch that has uh, a bunch of code on it uh, and comments explaining how it all works. Um, but it's very useful to understand how this works. I also recommend just reading through this. Uh, this is a, uh, a whole... Uh, course, computer architecture course that was written uh, using the GBA as a, uh, as a guide so you can uh, look this up um, and find this uh, GBA course if you want to understand the tile modes a little bit uh, more um, and the screen blocks and where the tile maps are loaded into. Um, and there's Tonk of course which is uh, one of the biggest resources on GBA programming in general. Um, so we have our tiles, our tile maps, we have our, uh, so th these are loaded in the screen blocks. As you can see here, this is what it will look like in your memory viewer uh, when you're loading this data in. Uh, you can check the memory viewer in MGBA if you're doing this type of stuff. I definitely recommend it. Um, we have our layers, uh, this, this is the skipping layer one again, but uh, we have as many, we have up to four layers for our backgrounds, and then we of course have our sprite layer. Um, but we are not talking about the sprite layer today. And after everything is done, we obviously everything gets loaded in together on top of each other. The layers are merged together. Um, so so yeah, so tiles and tile maps. It's a simple concept, but it can get confusing because of the limitations of the GBA. There are only a certain amount of space that you can store our data in. There is not an unlimited number of space. There's only four char blocks for our tiles and uh, that can only and, and then two for our sprites and um, that can only hold so much data we can only have so many tile sets and tile maps at the same time you can't have multiple tile sets and tile maps across multiple layers uh, f or, or one tile set across multiple layers if you wanted a really big one I've tried that and as far as I'm aware there's no way to get it to work without completely rewriting the rendering engine for the GBA. So I've been rambling a bit and I feel like I've probably confused some people more than I've enlightened them. Uh, so I'm probably going to wrap up the video here. Um, I hope that that's not the case and I've at least explained a little bit about how tiles and tile maps work in Tile Map Studio. Uh, oh, one last thing. This is very important and I hope everyone has stayed till the end. Um, after we uh, create our tile set, uh, the tile uh, we're going to want to re-export our palette because Tile Map Studio is going to change the palette uh, a bit. So this is what the palette used to look like, the ordering. Tile Map Studio reordered the palette. Uh, so we're going to want to save the palette again. Save the palette again. Uh, make sure to save, export the palette again because Tile Map Studio will change the palette. Uh, adding or changing the palette value here is not going to be enough. You uh, need to ch export your palette for when you insert it into the game. I mean, you need to do both. Um, but save the palette. That's uh, as much as I can stress, save the palette. So we have briefly talked about tiles now. We've talked about sprites in the last video. In the next video, I'm going to go over editing the title screen itself. It's just going to be a simple video. We're not going to get too into creating any complicated scenes, but um, make sure to join us on the next one if you want to learn about that. Otherwise, uh, you know, we'll catch you when we do. Um, anyway, if you have any comments, make sure to leave them below or in the Discord. We'll see you later.